Welcome to worship today at Faith Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Christopher Ewings and blessed to bring you good news from God's word as we get the opportunity today as every day as believers to live the gospel. How did you celebrate the 4th of July? Anybody do something exciting? Any of you have some hot dogs? Any of you check out your neighbors shooting off fireworks? Did any of you shoot off fireworks? It's kind of an interesting thing that we celebrate our independence by blowing stuff up and eating food. And yet, our God today, as we hear him speak to us, wants to blow some things up in our minds about how we think of independence. Today, Jesus wants to teach us what it means to have real independence that we can only find in him. This morning, we'll be following the order of worship called the Service of the Word. You'll find everything that you need for the worship service in the bulletin as well as in the insert. Everything is also on the screen. You're all welcome and invited to worship here today. We welcome those who are worshiping from the comfort of their own homes. God bless you today in your work and your worship as we glorify our God. We'll begin this morning by singing our opening hymn. It's hymn 277.
Please stand as we worship our God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and ask for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. Through faith, you are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Our God, govern the nations on earth and direct the affairs of this world so that your church may worship you in peace and joy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated as we give our attention to the reading of the Word of our God. In our three lessons this morning, we hear about the independence that we have from the slavery of sin that we can only find when we're dependent on Jesus Christ. In our first lesson, we hear the prophet Jeremiah speak to a church leader, a guy whose name was Pashur, and he speaks to him the clear word of God, showing how the old Adam still lives in our hearts and how the new Adam, Jesus Christ, gives us freedom from our bondage. A lesson from Jeremiah chapters 19 and 20. Jeremiah returned from Topheth, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and stood in the court of the Lord's temple and said to all the people, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Listen, I'm going to bring on this city and the villages around it every disaster I pronounce against them, because they were stiff-necked and would not listen to my words. When the high priest, Pasher, son of Emer, the chief officer in the temple of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesying these things, he had Jeremiah the prophet beaten and put into stocks at the upper gate of Benjamin at the Lord's temple. The next day, when Pasher released him from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord's name for you is not Pasher, but Magor Misabib, for this is what the Lord says, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. With your own eyes you will see them fall by the sword of their enemies. I will hand all Judah over to the king of Babylon, who will carry them away to Babylon or put them to the sword. I will hand over to their enemies all the wealth of this city, all its products, all its valuables, and all the treasures of the kings of Judah. They will take it away as plunder and carry it off to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who live in your house will go into exile to Babylon. There you will die and be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. This is the word of the Lord. We join together now in singing the psalm of the day. It's Psalm 31. We'll sing this psalm in unison.
chapter 5, and this lesson will serve as the basis for the sermon text today, a lesson from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all sinned, for before the law was given, sin was in the world, but sin is not taken into account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Again, the gift of God is not like the result of the one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man? Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. This is the word of the Lord. We hear the verse of the day. Alleluia, alleluia. Because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Alleluia.
In today's gospel, the Lord Jesus declares to us that we have a message to proclaim. You and I, just like the forefathers of the United States of America, will go through all kinds of trials and temptations as we live our faith. Yet we have greater resolve and more reason to voice our true faith. We have independence from sin and death because of Jesus. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10. Jesus is speaking when he says, A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. The congregation may be seated as we join together now in singing the hymn of the day. It's hymn number 396. Faith family, as we spend some time studying the sermon text this morning, I invite you all to open up your bulletin insert to page 5 for some message notes about the sermon text from Romans chapter 5. And I'm blessed as always to bring you good news from our God, news of his grace. 
the independence that we have from sin and death, not because of anything that we've done, but because of our dependence on Christ and all that he did for you and for me. And peace. Peace is the absence of war, the absence of conflict that God ought to have with us because we haven't done the kind of things that he's asked us to do. But peace is what he gives us in Jesus, the one who did it all for us. Grace and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What could be more American than independence? That's what this country was founded on, right? When you and I celebrated the 4th of July yesterday, every single one of you, every single moment of every single hour of that day, were thinking, yes, we're independent, right? Okay, maybe not. Maybe you spent more time thinking about whatever foods you were going to eat, if you could buy another fan quick because of the scorching heat in the summer, what plans you had to enjoy a day off of work, even though it was Saturday. You'll get Monday off too, right? Maybe you spent more time trying to cover your ears from the loud fireworks that everybody else was shooting off to show how much we as a nation love independence. Well, you know, there's a whole lot more to the 4th of July than just feasts and fireworks and a day off of work. There's a whole lot of history that goes back hundreds of years. The whole reason why we celebrate the 4th of July have, has its roots in 1773. If you can place that picture, that's the Boston Tea Party. When the citizens of the colonies said, taxation without representation isn't fair. We can't be governed by Britain when we don't even have a say. The English monarch is nothing but a tyrannical dictator, and we want independence. And that's really where the American Revolution came to a head. But it wasn't simply just throwing tea into the Boston Bay that caused that to happen. No, it was years later, on July 2nd of 1776, when the Continental Council got together, the Continental Congress, and signed the Declaration of Independence. Two days later, the 4th of July, that document became public as the authors showed the world we are one nation that's independent from Great Britain. We as Americans love independence. It's woven into the very fabric of who we are. So many products, so many things about our lives show how we want to be individual and, yes, independent from any kind of oppositional force. We want to be our own rulers. What could be a greater virtue for Americans than just that? Independence. Well, for as much as this nation is based on that one quality, people like John Adams and Thomas Jefferson George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and every single leader of the free world have epically failed to give us what they promised. They never got this movement to go far enough. They never achieved actual independence. Oh yeah, sure enough, we don't fly the English flag anymore in our country. But we're still subject to a much worse tyrant than the monarch of England. You and I are completely dependent on sin and death. We can't get out from underneath its stranglehold on our lives. It doesn't treat us like servants or subjects, but like slaves. And no matter how hard you and I try, we can't find real independence. Well, you and I need to go today to the real revolutionist. 
the one who comes to truly set you and me free from the shackles of sin and our slavery to death. As we live the gospel this morning, I want you to see that you have real independence greater than the United States of America could ever give you as you live the gospel today. And we find in Jesus Christ, the one who truly liberates us, giving us freedom and, yes, independence. When the authors of the Declaration set about writing a definition of what independence was, they used a few choice words that I think are really applicable and appropriate for us as not only citizens of the United States of America, but citizens of heaven to think about. They said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is your right in the United States of America to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. How's that going for you? Well, so far, so good, right? I see that all of you, as far as I can tell, are alive, right? All of you, as far as I can tell, live in the land of the free and the home of the brave, right? So check two of those off. How about the pursuit of happiness? Y'all look pretty happy to me this morning. Aren't these qualities that define your life every single moment of every single day? Because... What do we have as a document that binds us together? This declaration written by our forefathers of independence. We have independence from anything that would try and take those qualities away. But for how long? How long uh, do you have life? I wish I knew the answer to that question. Maybe I don't. How long will you have liberty? Is the basis that our country was built on of freedom going to be around in 10 years? Looking at the anarchy in the streets, I don't know. How long will you have happiness? Or how long do you have happiness? Fleeting moments of every day amidst the frustrations and worries of the world? Do you truly have independence from the things that our forefathers wanted us to? Freedom from death. Liberty from tyranny. And instead of slavery towards sadness, real hope and happiness. I wish. I wish that it were just that easy that we could write up a famous document, and now all of a sudden we have life, liberty, and happiness all the time. But we don't. Because you and I live under the reign and rule of a tyrannical dictator. It's not the King of England. It's not the President of the United States. It's not anyone who signed their name to the Declaration. But it's this guy. You want to talk about a problem in our life if the earliest revolutionaries got upset about taxation without representation, Paul points out how much worse of a dictator Adam is. It's not that we just get charged money without having a say. You and I will die because of what this guy did. How's that for independent? Go ahead and prove me wrong. Can any of you not die? So far, you've made it. How about in 100 years? Will any one of you be able to claim independence from death? I mean, maybe a little guy like Malachi's got a shot at it. The rest of us, I don't know. We get death just for showing up on the scene. Because of the crimes that Adam committed, it trickles down into our lives. That is so un-American, right? What about that seems fair? You mean 
I get punished because of what somebody else did? How can that possibly be? Paul proves it to us as he shows us how we live under the tyrannical dictatorship of Adam. Here's what he says. Sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. You see, you're not independent from death. You're not independent from sin. If you disagree, prove it to me. Just go one day without sinning. I dare you. You know as well as I do, it's not going to happen. It can't possibly happen because what God's word says. We are sinful by nature. Every single fiber in us wars against the God who wants nothing more than to give us peace. Sin has ruled us in such a way that we bow to it instead of trying to liberate ourselves. Left to ourselves, we have no hope of independence from sin or death. But we wear its dirty shackles around us every single day, refusing to leave from that tyrannical dictator. But there's more. Death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come. Sure, it would be nice if we could get out from the shackles of sin. But you know that it's not possible. What's even more fearsome, even more frightening, is death. It says that people lived under a time when they didn't sin by breaking a law. Adam broke the law, the one law that God had made, right? Don't eat that fruit. And he ate that fruit. But before God gave commandments, people still died. Death was still a dictator. From the very day that God said to Adam, if you eat of that fruit of the tree, you will surely die. Death came to all people who were born of Adam. It wasn't instantaneous. God didn't strike them dead on the spot. but they were now independent of life. Death was coming for certain. They had no possible liberty from the burden that they had brought on themselves. Sin and death touch our lives as well. We see the evidence of sin every single day through our thoughts, our words, and our actions that we ourselves have perpetrated. We see the evidence of death in our own lives too. Not only as we leave and lose loved ones, but as we grow older and our bodies start deteriorating, slowly but surely going from the healthy body of a newborn to the crippled corpse in the crypt. It's not a pretty picture. What terrible tyrants are sin and death. And it infects us all. If we're united in one thing as citizens of the United States of America, it's that we're captive to sin and death. But our God has come to change things up in our lives. There's a new Lord who brings a new kind of freedom. Instead of being under the tyrannical reign of the children of Adam, Paul points us to a new ruler who comes from heaven to destroy sin, to destroy death, and to bring us real independence. Listen to what he says about Jesus. The many died by the trespass of the one man. How much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? 
we see side by side in Scripture the one man, Adam, and the one man, Jesus. Adam brought sin and death. And here Jesus comes to bring grace and life. One singular act of sin infected us all. One singular act of our Savior brings life to all. As citizens of the kingdom of heaven, you and I know that grace. Jesus isn't any kind of a tyrannical dictator. But by grace, he gave his life in your place. By grace, he gives you real independence from sin. The kind of liberty that nothing and no one else ever possibly could. Jesus has taken every single last one of your sins away and nailed it to the cross. You're free. You have real liberty that I think most of our forefathers didn't even dream of. That's something that God wants to offer to the entire world. But it's yours today. He's not done filling us with blessings. He wants us to know for certain the independence that we have from sin. But he says, if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one, and how much more would those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Look at the new era that Jesus ushers in. The people who signed their names to the Declaration of Independence never imagined that they would live forever. But look what our liberator Jesus promises us. A share in eternal life where death is dead and all there is is life with God. Friends, that's what's ours in Jesus. What an amazing liberator we have in him. Not only does it fuel our faith to trust in the promises that he makes to us every single day, it gives us reason to live for him in a world that's so desperately seeking real life. The things that our American society are based on are so shallow in comparison with the gift that God has given to you and me. As our country celebrated the 4th of July, sure there are some people who probably tipped their hat to those who have gone before us and did their very best to make this country what we have now, which is the land of the free and the home of the brave, or a mess, where 80% of citizens of the United States say we're out of control as a country. Is that the kind of freedom and liberty that you have in the land of the free and the home of the brave? Are you looking for something better? I know I am. I want the real independence that we can only have from Jesus. I'm really glad that our first forefathers of this nation pointed us in the right direction. Do you remember what they wrote? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They got us off to a good start because they're pointing us to the only one who can give us life, liberty, and happiness. Even though many of those forefathers fell short of truly understanding what they wrote, they died, slaves to sin, and were never truly happy. You and I, as citizens of the kingdom of heaven, have eternal life. We have freedom from sin and death. And we have joy that is inexplainable because of what Jesus has done for us. You and I have true independence. It comes only from Christ. Listen to how Paul says that. Just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. 
through our singular Savior, Jesus Christ. You and I have all the gifts that our forefathers wanted to have, all the gifts that God has truly given to us, the freedom that we want, not simply as citizens of the United States of America, but citizens of the kingdom of heaven. That real independence changes the way that we live today. Doesn't it make you want to celebrate in a better way than blowing stuff up and maybe having some hot dogs on the grill? Those are all fine and good and they have their place. But we need to take it one step further as the Christian church. You see, it's a beautiful thing to go outside and look at the flag with 50 stars, that star-spangled banner, and remember what our forefathers have done. But if that's where we leave our celebration of independence, then too, our lives are so shallow and meaningless. There's a different flag for us. It's the one you see here in the front of the church. It's the other red, white, and blue banner. The symbol of the Christian church. The purity that God has given to us through Jesus' death on the cross. Now that's something to celebrate. Our real Independence Day took place on Easter Sunday when Christ showed that he had won the victory over sin and death and the devil forever. When he's made you a holy saint of God and given you today life that lasts forever. Friends, you have real independence. Let's celebrate that every single day of the year. July 5th is a great start. So is July 6th. So will June 19th and December 21st. Every single day of the year, you and I can celebrate what Jesus has done for us by giving us independence from sin and death. That's all ours when we realize that our faith really goes countercultural. By claiming independence, you and I are saying we uh, actually have a whole lot of dependence on Jesus. Everything depends on Jesus. Every single aspect of your walk with God depends on Jesus. What could be more un-American than making that claim? What could be more beautiful as citizens of the kingdom of heaven to know that truth? Your salvation depends on Jesus alone. When you know that, when you live that, you have real independence from Jesus now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's rise and join together now in confessing our faith in our Savior Jesus Christ, our triune God. Today we'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we typically receive our offerings, but due to our COVID restrictions, we ask that you would place your offerings in the plate either at the entrance or the exit of church, or that you would give your offerings online. We continue now with the prayer of the church. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for the, all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. 
You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach and say the truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick, cheer those who are sad, calm those who are distressed, and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as our nation this week celebrates the independence that we have as a country, we ask that you use us as the Christian church to show the dependence that we have on you. Help us to show the saintly lives that you have given us in Christ as we witness our faith to the world. Let your blessing be upon us and all we do to show the peace, the hope, the eternal life that we have, all because of what Christ has done for us. Now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we join together in singing our closing hymn, hymn number 123.
Please rise for the closing prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. Let's close our worship service this morning with the prayer after worship that you find on the back of your bulletin. If you don't have one with you, you can just listen as I pray. But if you have one, let's pray together out loud. Lord God, bless the word that you have proclaimed to me today. Make it both a word of power and of peace to convert those not yet your own and to comfort and confirm those who have come to the saving faith. Guide my footsteps by your word so that I may remain steadfast in faith, love you with all my heart, and love my neighbor as myself. Grant to me and all believers commitment to your instruction, that we may make known your eternal truth and trust in you all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless each one of you today as you go about living the faith that we just heard. As we close our time together this morning, I'd like to point out a few announcements that are in the bulletin insert. Take a note, especially at the first announcement about our voters meeting next Sunday. It's happening at 4.30 p.m. right after our Hmong worship service. Um, due to COVID restrictions, we are planning to invite people to come in person, but also there will be opportunities to join the meeting online if you feel uncomfortable coming to 5200 Lake Otis Parkway. You will be uh, able to vote through things electronically. Expect an email during uh, this week to give you more information about how we'll go about that process. But as we discuss the future of our ministry, it's critically important that we have the input from all of our families and voting members are uh, especially helpful to help lead our congregation in the direction we need to go always when we make decisions. One more thing, if you aren't a voting member of Faith Lutheran Church, that's the male members that are 18 and older, we encourage you to talk with one of the pastors to voice your opinions on the items that we'll be discussing. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about that, please speak with me after the church service today. One more thing that I'd like to point out, uh, the Zarnstorfs uh, sent a thank you letter to you. Please read what they've written in the bulletin insert. Uh, they're tremendously thankful for all that you've given them over the years, and I don't think they're in Arizona yet. So there's still time to send them an overnight card and get it before they arrive. Their address as well is written in the bulletin insert. Then one more item. We will be playing softball this Saturday against the good people of King of Kings Lutheran Church and Peace Lutheran Church. If you'd like to be a part of that, please speak with me. Uh, we've changed our plans a little bit due to rain delays, but we're planning to play in the late afternoon, early evening, and have some food. So if you're interested in, in joining us, you need to have zero baseball experience. We'd love to have you there. Because I think even with zero baseball experience, we can still, in a Christian way, crush our friends from the other cities. So we'd love to have you there. That's this Saturday at 4 p.m. Those were all the announcements that I wanted to point out today. Does anyone else have one? Oh, wait, there is one more that's not in the bulletin insert. Uh... For the past few weeks, a few members of faith has, have been getting together to take a bike ride together, uh, a faith jaunt. We've done some different things. If you'd be interested in participating in something like that, we try and go about 15 miles or so uh, each bike trip. We can do more or less based on your interest. Yesterday, we took a tour to Anchorage and went 30 miles around the city. If you'd like to join us for one of those bike rides, we'd love to have you. Please speak with Mr. Jeff Wackenfuss or with me after the worship service, and we'll get in touch with you about our future plans. 
Now, any other announcements from the congregation? All right, and have a blessed week, faith family, as you live the gospel in Jesus' name. We'll usher out this way. Have a wonderful week. Oh, did the, did the door closed? No, no, no. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon.